All right, guys, we're going to move on to Podluck, and uh, this is a big announcement, so I'm going to... Uh, we won't spend a ton of time on this, but it's very big news, which is that James Gunn and Peter Safran have been tapped to lead DC films and animation. That is a very big deal because out of all the people they could get for their their Kevin Feige, the dude who makes really, really cr cr like crude humor isn't the guy I would have tapped for it. Which one's crude humor? Uh, James, James Gunn. Gunn. Mm -hmm. James Gunn is, uh, is absolutely crude humor. Because he got in trouble for all the... I was going to say, like, look yeah. at this guy really rising from the ashes. He is. Uh, he is. Uh, and they just released the trailer for the, the Guardians of the Galaxy um, Christmas special right as they made that this announcement. So it was like DC spiting Marvel. Do you think uh, it's a good idea to have a duo replace the no. role of one person? Because it seems like they could have a... A rivalry that isn't helpful. The idea here is that James Gunn would be the creative mind, the be the head of the creative side of it, and Peter Safran would be the head of the executive side of it, the more business oriented side of it. The strange thing about this is, though, guys, uh, is that they're going to be allowed to work on projects outside of DC. That makes no sense, and that the contracts look to be for about four years. That makes no four sense. Four years is the development of one film. Uh, 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 for Maybe a it's because they're yeah. just like they're trying yeah. it out. Maybe one of them will ultimately get to stay and the other one will be out. Like it's a demo period, you know? Yeah. Peter They're Safran. beta testing this. Peter Safran, from what I understand, is a very successful uh, horror uh, or, or like like the Poltergeist films or like Annabelle or something like that. He does a bunch of uh, uh, of like that genre. And he built, oh, I'm sorry, the Conjuring universe. He built out like all the movies that come out in the, the Conjuring franchise. So he has he has history there. And James Gunn is a unique option. He was able to bring back Guardians of the Galaxy, like bring obscure characters like Guardians of the Galaxy that nobody cared about and make people care about them. There's no arguing that he is a creatively gifted storyteller. I do believe that the Suicide Squad, the, the James Gunn Suicide Squad sequel, is the best of the DC movies. Well, Safran was also involved in, in the, making of in that In the production movie. of that. And Peacemaker, outside of the weird... Uh, climate change activism at the end was genuinely a show that I, I enjoyed. Uh, I think James Gunn is talented. Do I th see him as an as a studio executive? I don't know about that. Do you like but him more maybe than the Batman movie? What? Yes, I don't I, I didn't like the Batman movie. Oh man. I, I like did, it. They, too long. But maybe that's why they long. paired him up with this guy. They're like, we we yeah. want the things that Jim Gunn makes, but we don't believe he can actually get it done. So yeah. we got to bring in Peter. And so, they're like, that sounds good. We like this partnership. So so basically the idea here is that they, they've already got uh, stuff planned out that's coming out through Aquaman uh, Fallen Kingdom, which I believe is the next start of next year. Uh 2023 at the end mm -hmm. of 2023 right so and then after that he's got basically three years to make something happen and i don't know what how are you be. going to build out a scheduled slate of the films that are coming out to do like remedial work yeah. for dc to catch up with marvel in that short period of time yep uh there isn't a it's not a presidency nope uh, but like Marvel's clearly, at least in quality, going super down the drain. Yeah, they're they're at the C D level yeah. superheroes now, so I don't think it'll be that hard for DC to catch up if they take their A listers super seriously. So it says Saffron came up as a manager where Gunn was among his clients and is fully uh, enmeshed. Is that a word? Enmeshed. Enmeshed. Yes. Enmeshed? Okay. Cool. And the, the I'm sure the writer just felt uh, a ray of like coolness on him as he wrote that. I'm sure. Uh, in the world of DC, <laughs> that weird of a word. as a producer uh, of the $1 billion grossing Aquaman and its upcoming sequel, as well as Suicide Squad, Peacemaker, and Shazam. Again, I like I would put Shazam up there with the Suicide Squad. Obviously, tonally, almost completely the opposite of the Suicide Squad sequel, but I loved Shazam as well, as much as you can love these movies. Uh, his relationship with Warner extends back 10 years and includes $2 billion Conjuring franchise. That's a horror movie. Uh, the Saffron Company company recently re-upped its production deal with Warner's. It's interesting because I really was my biggest fear was they were going to give it to to J J Abrams. They were like, oh, "We no. gave you your two hundred and fifty million dollar deal that you did literally nothing with. Why don't we give you uh, the head of the studio? Because Hollywood's fantastic at failing upwards. Mm -hmm. Like Hollywood loves to have people fail upwards. Like your movie that nobody saw. Here's a Star Wars movie. Dubai. Your your indie film that nobody gave a crap about. Here's a Marvel movie. This is genuinely impressive. Black Adam is still a 90% audience score with 5,000 plus verified yeah, it's ratings. Yeah, it's not going down. If, if it was going to go down, it would have gone down by now. Damn. So, 
Uh, so in, here's that word that I was using earlier, and I'm glad that, uh, that they said this. We're honored to be the stewards of these DC characters we've loved since we were children, Gunn and Saffron said in a statement. We look forward to collaborating with the most talented writers, directors, and actors in the world to create an integrated, multi-layered universe that still allows for individual expression of the artists involved. He's getting into corporate speak there. Yeah. I was expecting to hear synergy at any, any moment there. Do you think but, it's interesting? Sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. I was going to say, do you think it's interesting they're saying, like, these are characters we've loved since we were children, but children of today don't have their own characters to fall in love with. Like, they, they do. Just have they're just not in the movies. In, I mean, there's new characters created all the time. They're just not in the movies and the TV shows. But the kids don't care about those they, characters, yeah, do they? they? Yeah. yeah. They're, they're poorly like, written. When are you going to make a movie about my favorite streamer, huh? I mean, there's a reason that the A-listers of the DCEU have become the A-list characters. Yep. I don't think that the new ones are up to par. Also, I, I, it's funny how uh, this kind of does one of the other videos that I was watching says this kind of proves that like everybody that was quote unquote canceled other than the ones that went to jail are pretty much fine. Yeah. Like uh, Louis C.K. is making money on his own. He just sold out Madison Square Garden. Uh, Everyone uh, comes back from these things. Did Roseanne ever come back? Whatever that, what the hell happened to Roseanne? Uh, I don't know. Canceled. I, she, she, I thought she had some deal with Fox or Newsmax for a minute, but I could be wrong. I, I don't follow her career too intensely, I have to say. I always get her and Rosie O'Donnell mixed up. I get I her too. And, um, and they're very different. Yes, they are. Oh, who is that? Uh, Paula Dean. I mix up Roseanne with Paula Dean because they both said like controversial things. Yep. Uh, so we've got all this and then remember four years on the contract. I don't know if that's enough time to do anything. Ezra Miller could have assaulted many a woman and uh, burn down many uh, like a karaoke bar in that time. So they've got to be very, very careful. If he doesn't even need a month. Yeah. yeah. That's like <laughs> one weekend for him. Okay, so this is, I, I want to read this part. It says, DC currently only has the movies that are finished under the former head of DC Films, Walter Hermada, that are set to release. So that's December of 2023, uh, which is Shazam, Fury of the Gods, which is March 17th. The Flash, which is June 23rd. Blue Beetle, which is still on the schedule, which is August 18th. And Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom, which is December 25th, 2023. That's where their slate is up through. Patty Jenkins finished the script on Wonder Woman, but that year's that movie's a couple years out, probably at least. Uh, so that means that Gunn and Saffron will have less than three years to release movies from December 2023 20, uh, to November 2026. And whatever they may have planned for TV, though it should be said that previously it has been reported that David Zaslav favors movies and theatrical releases instead of streaming. I don't want a bunch of stupid shows that I have to watch to remain no in continuity. If they make them and they're, in in they're independent and separate, fine. I'm fine with that. Like the Rogues Gallery one yeah, TV that, shows. I just don't like when they sure. list off all these things that are coming. And then this guy. And then this guy. But it's all empty promises. Yeah. No, but it's like, oh God, just can we detox from a freaking superhero? You'd think. Um, like I said, I, I take great joy now watching literally anything but that. Like, the peripheral is not even something I would normally like. I went back and started rewatching Travelers on Netflix, which is kind of in the same vein of time travel in science fiction. I'm not a big science fiction guy, but I just don't care about... <laughs> like, the only superhero mm -hmm. stuff I want to watch is animated right now. I don't I don't want to be watching the, the live action so, stuff. We're going to see Wakanda forever. And, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So. Are you looking forward to X Men ninety seven then? Not really. I wasn't it's a big, animated. I wasn't a big. Uh, I was, but I'm a DC animated fan. I wasn't a huge Marvel. Uh, yeah. We've got plenty of people in the chat that love their that love their Wolverine and love their Rogue and their Storm. It's just uh, it wasn't my thing. So we'll we'll see where it goes. I I will. It will be interesting to see if he can find a way to temper his humor in these projects. Right. He has to understand where his f humor fits and understand that it doesn't fit with all characters. James Gunn's sense of humor works. How does it come out? I mean, uh, I know it's he has a crude sense of humor, he, but like you can do a lot of things to. There's a lot of crude humor uh, in the Suicide Squad, for instance, yeah. that is tempered by the fact that there's a lot of genuinely emotional scenes that are then like l given levity through crude humor. And I know that that sounds. I don't annoying. remember genuinely emotional scenes in Suicide Squad. There was there's from a couple when of I watched um, it. The, anything with uh, with uh, Ratcatcher with what's her name the the girl character that was like that was great. Everything that she was in was great. Uh, in, in the or the stuff with um Bloodsport and uh, Bloodshot and his kid, uh, or Bloodsport and his kid. Uh, there's good stuff in there, and James Gunn can do that. Uh, I'm not a huge Guardians of the Galaxy fan, but a lot of people love the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise. 
it is what it is. But he's going to need to understand that his humor will work with some characters, but not with other characters. Mm -hmm. uh, like, I don't need to see that type of humor with Batman. I don't need to see that type. Thank you. Uh, I hate that the humor is pressured at all. Yeah. Why is there the expectation that we have to make everything? Yeah. That's what ruined the uh, Clooney. Batman. Well, at, uh, to be honest, though, but it, w with Gunn, it feels like that's his style. With Marvel, it feels like that's Marvel's style. If it works for him and it's one director kind of uh, shepherding that forward with all the projects, I don't think that works. But if it's just his movies, that's fine. Yeah, I, I just don't think like shoehorning humor into all superhero films when it may not fit the tone is kind of juvenile and infantilizes the audience yeah the way i think you could do it is that as long as you keep the spirit of the character you can integrate humor for example if you're gonna do batman it has to be dry humor mm. it can't be like slapstick like oh i just slipped on a banana peel like that <laughs> they do that good in the animated in the animated movies his, his humor yeah, yeah. 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 because he because he's like devon air and it's like oh huh, he's so clever yeah uh, Johnny Derp says, why is humor the expectation? Joss Whedon. Yes. Joss Whedon ruined everything. He yeah. did. We should, uh, like... That uh, guy. You know, I don't support canceling, but, like, you know, uh, he's awful. So We just have to all go to therapy and unpack the influence of... Of Joss Whedon yeah. on everything. Well, a lot of people pointed out that it's not Joss Whedon necessarily. It was Kevin Smith that had that sense of humor in the pop culture references before he even did. So mm. blame Kevin Smith, too, because he's just you could tell him he was going to cry because that's all Kevin Smith does now is cry, 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 cry. Someone take that clip and then edit it. So Brad is saying Jordan Peterson. <laughs> True, because <laughs> that is all he does lately. No, I'll leave Jordan Peterson alone. We love Jordan Peterson here. Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.